On the 24th September 2017, Angela Merkel was re-elected as German Chancellor, with her party gaining most of the votes. That will make it Merkel's fourth term, and it's a good reason for us to look more deeply into the life of a politician who, without a doubt, plays a major role worldwide. At the time of her birth, nine years after the end of World War II, Germany was divided into the Socialist East and the Capitalist West. Even though those two countries were economically and politically separated, the border crossings were still open and between 1954 and 1961 over 3 million people used that opportunity to escape to West Germany. Merkel's father was an evangelical pastor in Hamburg. But in 1954, just a few weeks after Merkel was born, the family made the unusual step to move east into a small village inside East Germany. Merkel's father had received a letter from the local evangelical church that offered him a pastorate. And so he took the challenge to work as a priest in a country that persecuted the churches. Especially in the early years of East Germany, the socialist state aggressively enforced its atheist policy. For example, by forbidding Merkel's mother, Herr Lind, to work as a teacher because of her husband's work in the church. The socialist state also took harsher actions against those fleeing the country, and in 1961 began with the construction of the Berlin Wall that made it impossible to cross the border and escape. The first political event during my childhood that I distinctly remember is the building of the Berlin Wall 50 years ago. I was seven years old at the time. Seeing the grown-ups around me, even my parents, so stunned that they actually broke out in tears was something that shook me to the core. My mother's family was separated through the building of the wall. Merkel was a student with excellent grades, who began studying physics at the Karl Marx University in Leipzig. She later worked as a scientist at the Academy of Sciences in East Berlin, where she also met her future husband. October 7, 1989. The East German regime has organized marches in East Berlin to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the socialist state. Inside the Palace of the Republic, speeches are held, and officials lift their glasses in celebration, just as if everything is normal, pretending not to hear the loud whistling sound that comes from outside. Thousands of citizens have been demonstrating for weeks all over the country, and on this day they stand just outside the palace, demanding change, freedom of travel and of expression. Astonishing news from East Germany, where the East German authorities have said, in essence, that the Berlin Wall doesn't mean anything anymore. On the 9th of November 1989, after 40 years of division, the Berlin Wall collapsed, and the East German state with it. And as this was the beginning of a new era in the history of Germany, it also marked a new chapter in Angela Merkel's life. She began to publicly engage in politics and became a member of the Christian Democratic Party. In 1990, the first unified German elections were held, in which she was elected to parliament and shortly afterwards became minister under Chancellor Helmut Kohl. In 1994, she became minister for the environment and nuclear safety. When Helmut Kohl lost elections against the Social Democrat Gerhard Schröder in 1998, Merkel became the hope for a new beginning inside her party, but was not able to become candidate for chancellor until the year 2005, where, in a spectacular close election, she defeated Schröder and became Germany's first female chancellor. Was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. What started in America last year has now spread to every part of the world. We're down 9% today. The Zetradax over in Frankfurt is down by 9%. The Paris market down by 9%. We're down over 16%. Dow at the same time has fallen about 18%. The stock market is now down 21%. Because we're now down 43%. Her first term was early on dominated by the international financial crisis hitting Europe and the United States. The German government bailed out failing banks and it kept the German auto industry that was heavily struggling amidst the crisis alive by implementing state subsidies to encourage people to buy new cars. While the German economy recovered quickly after the crisis, there were problems in other European states, most notably Greece a country that was experiencing high growth rates ever since the euro was adopted, 
but also a country that was already heavily in debt before the financial crisis. And when the markets collapsed, the state debt rose to an amount where people questioned the country's liquidity. Together with other European countries, Germany was providing loans to the Greeks under the European Stability Mechanism. Merkel's course with Greece is to make future loans dependent on the government's willingness to adopt reforms and to commit to fiscal austerity. Helfen wir, indem wir sozusagen Bedauern äußern über die schwierige Lage in diesen Ländern, oder helfen wir, indem wir ermuntern zu den notwendigen Reformen. However, those reforms are very unpopular inside Greece, and so far the economy is still fragile. While some see her position as necessary to keep the eurozone together. Others have strongly criticized her actions. There is this quaint view that um, Germany has the right economic model and everybody else has the wrong economic model. And if everybody becomes like Germany, the world will be a better place. Exactly. Which is wrong. Oh. Two thousand fifteen was Europe's most turbulent year in recent history. Consequences of war in Syria and Iraq can now also be seen in Europe, on one hand by the cruel terrorist attacks by radical Islamists, and on the other hand by the many people that are fleeing from war as refugees. After the horrible terrorist attack on the Charlie Hebdo magazine in Paris, Merkel stood side by side with the Central Council of Muslims to hold a morning ceremony at the Brandenburger Gate. With each month, the number of refugees who took the dangerous path across the Mediterranean Sea increased. And while Hungary and other states were closing their borders, Merkel decided to accept refugees. Throughout the year, 476,000 asylum applications were filled in Germany, an increase of 135% compared with the previous year. And while some praised Merkel for her steadfastness, others criticized her for dictating the course for Europe. What's happening with respect to her position on refugees here in Europe? She is on the right side of history on this. The, the problem is not a European problem. The problem is a German problem. I think what she did to Germany is a disgrace. Is a disgrace. It's a total disgrace. Also in Germany, the opinions are divided. During the course of the migrant crisis, a strong protest movement has emerged. And ironically, Merkel faces the biggest opposition in East Germany, where she comes from. The result of that was seen in Germany's federal election 2017, where Merkel's party, the CDU, here in grey, lost more than 8% and a new party, that has previously never been in the German parliament, became third strongest power. The AFD campaigned against the refugee politics of the current government, and interestingly, a clear division between the East and West can be seen in the election outcome. Angela Merkel's party, however, is clearly the strongest one, and therefore she will remain Chancellor. But the tasks in the future are not easier, both at home, where she has to find a way to overcome the split of East and West, as well as internationally, where tensions are high and the relationship with the US is worsening. Angela Merkel will face tough decisions, and we will have to observe how her story continues. This video was not made to promote a certain opinion on the politics of Angela Merkel. It was made to be a portrait of a politician who, without a doubt, plays a major role worldwide. If you want to support more videos like this, then subscribe and share this documentary.